Okay, so what we've looked at so far with JavaScript has been uh, very basic but very powerful. Very powerful because we're going to use this sort of paradigm often where we've got some sort of trigger that executes a function. This function currently only displays one or does one thing, runs one command, prompt. But a function can run many sub-commands. So what, what I want to do is, well, if we kind of have the starting point that we can make a prompt appear, can we do something with the user's input? Let's explore that a little bit. As I said, right now prompt will simply pop up, take the person's name, and do nothing with it. Maybe someone's keys are going off or something. I hear some beeping. Anyway, uh, so this pops up and it asks for the name and nothing happens with it. Let's see about maybe storing that name a little more permanently. So let's, um, within the script up here, after the function, so after the curly brace, line 13, we're going to do something outside of the function for a moment. Um, we can create containers that will hold uh, data. Data such as text or numbers, uh, fractions, a variety of things. So we can create containers. Um, and one way to do this is by using the keyword var which is short for variable. A variable then is what we're about to create. So I'm going to create a variable called, um, I don't know, thing1, semicolon. Here basically I've said let's create something called thing1, a container called thing1. So like this container right here is holding all of this stuff. Actually it's more of an array. But uh, this is a container and right now it's holding water, and it can hold apple juice, it can hold vodka, whatever. So it's a container. That's what we've said here. Create a container called thing1. On the next line, let's say we can then fill it with something, just like my bottle there is filled with water. To fill a container, a variable, we would write its name equals, and then let's say um, just the number uh, 1, semicolon. So the equals in JavaScript and in many programming languages, equals doesn't mean the same thing as 1 plus 1 equals 2, really. It means, basically, you can think about it as take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. So I'm taking the number 1 and I'm putting it into the variable called thing1. And to prove that thing1 now has that number one inside of it, let's write console.log thing one. You might notice there's no quotes here. Don't write quotes for the moment. So save all of this and run it. Open your console because this won't be visible on screen. It's going to be in the console. And in the console, you should just see a number one. So I'm going to save it and run it, open the console, there's a 1. There's a 1 because I'm telling it here, display the contents of thing 1. Let's compare that with, instead of thing 1, we'll write quote thing 1 quotes thing one. Save and run that. So just add quotes around thing one. What's the difference? It's 
it showed literally the name of the variable. Thing one. Without the quotes, it shows you the contents of the variable. With the quotes, it showed you literally the name of the variable. You might have noticed that when we were doing alert up here and console log up here, in quotes we wrote hello world. So it wrote hello world, literally what we wrote. That would be known as a string. Within the quotes, it's a string. So it's not, it's not like opening the container and pouring it out the water. It's just showing you here's a container, not what's inside the container. So knowing this, let's put it back how it was. And just the number one appeared in the console, which uh, doesn't give me very much feedback. In the console, we, we would best use the console to help ourselves out debugging and figuring out concepts and problems. So instead of just the number one appearing, let's try this. Within the, parenth within the parentheses, we'll back up to the beginning of the word thing one. We'll write two quotes here, space plus. I'll explain that in a moment. But write a Write the opening and closing quotes, and then the plus, and then a space, and then thing one. Notice there's no quotes around thing one. Very important. Inside the quotes, we'll say thing one, colon, space. Now save it and run it. So obviously, it'll say in the It'll say in the console, thing one, thing one, right? Thing one, colon one. So I've combined things here. I've written the words to the console, literally, thing one, colon, and the space. The plus symbol, again, doesn't behave like 1 plus 1 equals 2. If we have 1 plus 1 in the real world, that would equal 2. But if we have 1 plus 1 in JavaScript, it might turn out to be 11. How can 1 plus 1 equal 11? But what the plus is doing, it's just building like a sentence. It's putting the first thing and the next thing next to each other. The technical term is concatenation, which is just the fancy word of saying, show this on the screen, and then show this on the screen, plus, and then show this, plus, and then show this. So think of it in that terms, like we're building a sentence, like we're putting Legos next to each other. The term is concatenation. So on the console, what we see is first the words thing one, and then next to it, the number one. If you didn't put the space right there, then it would look like that, no space, because the space also takes up space. It's invisible, but it does take up a value in the memory. It takes up a value on screen. So if I want that space there, I add the space in the quotes, and then it shows up right there. So I'm just showing you here that I created a variable, and at the beginning the variable doesn't contain anything. Um, the next line, then we say put the number one in the variable. Equals. And then the next line we say show the contents of the variable and pretty, uh, pretty it up a little bit. So in the quotes I'm saying thing one has this, the number one. So what if we did this? What number will appear in the console? 100. 100? Let's see. It says thing 1 and then 100. Because it goes in order. We first say into this variable put number 1. And then we say into the variable put 100. So it dumped number 1 and then it put 100. It didn't add them. It didn't do anything special. We never told it to do that. 
the way this works with equal is we replace it. We've replaced we've replaced the contents of the variable with a new item. So we dump the number one and then it um, it put the 100. And therefore the, the variable is still called thing one. So that says thing one and then what's inside of it is 100. And now notice I wrote plus equals 101. If the console comes on when you go on to uh, settings, you have to right click, select inspect element, and then click console. So plus equals, that one behaved a little bit more like I would have thought. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, so in this case, it took the 1 and then it added to it in, in a mathematical way. It added 100 and therefore we have 101. So we'll be using both of them throughout the course. Equals, you can make a comment right here. Equals fills a variable removing the first value. So when you have an equals, it dumps the old value, replaces it with the new value. Well, not the first value, the last value. Hmm. There are certain words you can't use, like if you wanted to use the words instead of the number. I typed in the word this, and it doesn't work. Did you add the uh, Did you add the comment first? No, no, I wanted to both. I wanted both of them to show. Because if you say type in the word this instead of the hundred, it turns like a blue and it italicizes. But you can use the word that. <laughs> you mean that right there? But yeah, if you type in this, though, it gives you like. Yeah, that that one is reserved. Okay, so then over here, plus equals adds a value to the existing value. plus is concatenation, which, what's an easier way to explain that? Just uh, putting values next to each other. Uh, puts values next to each other in sequence. Next to each other. So knowing this, we will be able to capture that, that name that someone inputs. Because right now the prompt, it takes the name, but it does nothing with it. We can capture that name in a variable, keep it a little more permanent, and then do something with it. So as I said, uh, JavaScript, or the web browser that is, is going to look at all of the code like the JavaScript and look at it line by line and run each line. But the funny thing, and maybe weird if you're not used to this, um, the, the code doesn't necessarily need to be in the order when you're going to use it. Because what I've done here is I've created a variable, thing1, which will capture the name, but I've created it after the function that actually captures the name but I don't invoke the function, I don't run the function until I click. So that's okay. You might think, well, uh, just for my s sanity, I will create the variable first and then I will use it to capture the name. That'll work as well. It's just that this function doesn't run until it's clicked. So the way that it, we've got it here kind of backwards will work. If you don't get what I mean, 
let's do this. Let's go back up to the function. And at the beginning of the line, prompt, let's write thing1 equals prompt. Oh, thing one. Yes, thing one. So even though we didn't create the object, uh, the variable thing one, until later, this should still work because we don't run hello pop up until we click. And what I what I want to do then is next line we'll do console log. In quotes, we'll say, your name is, colon space, plus space thing one. So the first time this runs top to bottom, it'll get to this part where it won't really do anything with it because we haven't invoked it. But it will get to this. It'll see that we created it. We filled it with one. We filled it an additional 100. It'll display 101 if you did this. And then when we click the button, It'll then replace the contents of thing one with whatever the person's name is, and then it'll display in the console your name is whatever whatever name you typed. So try that. Load it up. Op open the console. You'll see a result. Then t click the button and type your name. Click OK, and then you'll see another result. So I saved it and ran it, and the first thing that I see is that it says Thing1, 101. I clicked it, typed my name, and now it says your name is Victor. And it says that because I'm reusing the same variable, Thing1. Notice if you double click the Thing1 in your code, it highlights it everywhere that you've used it. I believe I've mentioned that about Notepad++ before, that if you select a little piece of code, it will highlight throughout your code. This could be useful to figure out, did I type the right variable? Unfortunately, though, it doesn't seem to pay attention to, to, to case. So if that were capital thing one, this would not work. It's still saying 101. Because there's no such thing as thing one. There is a thing one, however. There's no such thing as capital thing one. But there is such thing as thing lowercase. So the problem is if I select it, they all ha highlight it. And at a glance, I think, what, what's wrong? I typed it right. Well, that's not a syntax error. Well, it could be a syntax error. It's a bit more of a logic error. Notepad will highlight them all, but it will highlight it even if it's the wrong syntax, unfortunately, or the wrong caps, unfortunately. And the reason this still says your name is 101 is because the console here says, say the words literally, your name is whatever the value of thing 1 is, which has been defined here, not here. Capital thing 1 is different than lowercase thing 1. Yes. Is login reserved? No. Login so should. Prompt? Did you, is, did you have prompt? Yeah, I have all that. Well, I'm getting everything you get. I'm not seeing any code that generates a login prompt. Prompt is what generates it. Yeah. Prompt is the is the reserved command. Like we've got alert. Uh, like we've got write. Prompt is the reserve JavaScript. So here it's saying your name is Victor. It captured the, the result of running prompt 
it put it into thing one. So notice how powerful that is. You might think, well, we can put in simple values into variables, yes, but you can put a whole command result into a variable. <coughs> we get to the map, for, for example, with one variable called map equals, that'll have latitude, longitude, zoomed value of the map. Is it a street level map or is it an aerial map? All of that data is saved in the one variable. This is a very powerful aspect of JavaScript. So if I click the pop-up again and put in a different name, it dumped the old name and put the new name. If I put in another name, it'll put in another name. Great. Well, what if I put one, two, three, four? It'll accept one, two, three, four. But that's not a name. That's more uh, coding that is necessary to capture proper input. Again, this is computers are dumb. They'll do exactly what you tell them. We never told it. Only accept names. So here it'll accept numbers. It'll accept symbols. Looks like I'm swearing at it. So I click OK. Your name is blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. It'll accept. What if you click OK at this point without anything? Mm -hmm. Empty. These are these are single. No, actually, those are double quotes. It's nothing. So blank. Um, what if I'm typing something and I click cancel? No. So this is just doing literally what we told it, and we haven't told it to do that much. So you can get these weird results. This is the part of the logic that you have to figure out. This is, um, this is figuring out all the possible ways that your users might screw up and perhaps have a solution. So I'm trying to remember the quote. I just heard it recently uh, about computers. Someone said something like, uh, I forget the author, um, it was uh, something like, uh, you can never make anything foolproof because there are so many ingenious fools. <laughs> so I was expecting just people to write in a name, but I haven't dealt with what if they write a number, what if they write symbols, what if they write nothing. We'll get to all of that, of course, dealing with, with this stuff. And th these issues have come up before. JavaScript has been around, you know, it's going to be 20 years, probably in one or two years. Let's just round it up. JavaScript's been around 20 years. So these issues have come up. Therefore, there are these JavaScript libraries to solve some of these problems, to make things faster, to make things better. jQuery was invented because some of these issues were coming up over and over and over. So JavaScript commands were invented and the library was put together and that gives us the ability to write things as the tagline again says write less do more write less JavaScript do more with it um, that's why we've got the jQuery mobile library with that with just data role equals page we've got the whole paradigm of a page data role equals navbar we've got a navbar without uh, us having to write line by line it's done for us. So there's probably out there some libraries that will take care of this, that will validate user input and only accept, uh, you know, names and not numbers and symbols. If we're gonna work, if we're gonna figure this out ourselves, we're gonna have to roll up our sleeves and write a lot of a lot of code. Like your car, how does it work? Who knows? You just drive it. If you really want to know how it works, take a mechanics class. You learn how it works. Um, that's why we have JavaScript libraries to help us just drive. So if that's appearing, if that's appearing in the console, and me as a developer, I know there's a console. If I want this to appear on screen, let's work with, let's work with it appearing on screen, not just the console. We've seen one way to do it. Let's try that again. After console log here, let's do what we did up there. Line six, document dot write. 
So we're saying, on the document, let's write something. Let's write exactly what's in the quotes inside the parentheses of log. Your name is colon space space plus thing one. What happens? Everything else, everything should happen the same as before until we get to that one line. Let's see how that might differ. So if you save it and run it, or just refresh it here, all right. Click there, Victor, click OK. Your name is Victor. Where did my link go? Document.write is the nuclear option. It will replace everything in the document. Whatever currently existed gets replaced with this new, uh, whatever new we write here. So it got the job done, but now it made that link disappear. We can do this better with a little more code, but did you get that? If I refresh it, it comes back. So it replaced everything in the document with this right output. It erased the, the stuff that was already in the body. <coughs> So that's too, that, that's the nuclear option, that's too much. I want to be more surgical. Uh, I want that your name is, I want that to appear below what's already on screen. As I say, as I'm going to say often, there's many ways to do this. Here's one way. I'm going to comment that document.write. And instead, I'm going to create a placeholder on screen in the body, a placeholder, and in that placeholder, I will display your name is thing one. So let's go back to the body, line 27. We'll create this placeholder. Div. Div can be a good placeholder. Div is uh, this generic box again. And we can fill the box with uh, the value up there. But in order for this to work, we need to name this div. We need to give it a unique ID or a class but in our case, we'll do a unique ID. ID equals, we'll call it username. Now we can refer to that div via the JavaScript. Now we can say, when we capture the person's name, then write this information into that div. Because we know the name of the div, username. And we'll see later when we actually incorporate jQuery that we can write this much more succinctly. For the moment, we have to write it the long way. Document dot get dot, I'm sorry, just get capital element capital by capital ID. Very careful here. This is always a beginner mistake. ID only has a capital I not a capital I, capital D. That always happens to people, and I don't know why they didn't make it capital ID. It's capital I only. Document dot get element by ID. Get is lowercase, element, capital E, by, capital B, ID, capital I. You have to write it this way. Basically, we're saying somewhere in the document, there is some element, we can refer to it by its ID. In parentheses, and then in quotes, what's the ID? Username. So here we're saying there's some element on screen called username. Yeah. <laughs> 
And what we want to do is change what's inside of there, which in this case is nothing. We want to use this empty placeholder to display your name is thing one. So then finally at the end, dot inner HTML. HTML is all capitalized. And then equals quotes your name is At, after the quotes just like the green line space plus thing one semicolon after the quote plus space, thing one, no quotes, semicolon. MTL, good eye, HTML. Inner HTML. Okay, now save and run it. it should behave just about the same until the point that then it displays your name in the placeholder. Yeah, just a moment. Let me see if mine worked. Your name is Victor. What's that? We did. We did. We put a div down here. We're just using it as a plain old, an invisible placeholder. And then we've written it within our HTML. Yeah. Right here. Your name is Victor. Your name is Jack. So did that work for you? This long form right there can be replaced with some jQuery with a symbol with a simple dollar symbol and a little bit more. So all of that document dot get element by ID blah 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 all of that can be replaced with a dollar symbol because we find ourselves as uh, developers writing that all the time document dot get element by ID over and over and over and so jQuery exists again write less do more one dollar symbol basically encompasses that. It won't work for us right now because we don't have the JavaScript, we don't have the jQuery library loaded. Perhaps on future versions of the web browsers we'll have it built in. Right now all the web browsers have the basic JavaScript library built in. And probably eventually, because it's always the trendsetter, Google Chrome will probably have jQuery built in at some point, if not already. I haven't checked. But uh, until then, we would have to add, um, you know, link, uh, source equals, the jQuery library, and then we'd be able to tap into the jQuery shorthand. Yep, div. So this is just our very quick first day introduction to some JavaScript. This is what causes the interaction. Um, we're going to wrap up in just a moment. I'll put my code in the, in the drive. When we come back next time, then, we're going to explore more JavaScript. We're going to then create a map. Uh, it'll be a fully functional map, as our example shows. Um, and we, we'll continue. Then um, that'll be the next week. It'll be the last week. We'll continue JavaScript. We'll continue the map, which is geolocation. 
We'll talk about local storage, which is, right now these variables are still temporary. They're more permanent than not using them, but if I close the file and load it again, it's not going to remember Victor anymore. So variables are deleted when you close the web browser. Something called local storage will let us save them. They're kind of like cookies, but better. And we'll be able to save the data permanently. Um, so that's in store next week. Uh, well, I'll put my work in the drive and uh, see you next time.